Okay, here we are. Eyes on St Albans. Look at the lovely signage. Just up from the quadrant at Marshall's Wick. Free parking. So I parked along there. And here is the fabulous Cheers! I mean, the shop is amazing. I'm going to shut this. I'll give you a little tour around and then we'll actually talk to the man himself. But I have never seen an optician's like it. How stylish, how funky. Just like the man himself. Um, and this beautiful store is one of a kind. You will not find a store like this. He's run away. He's going to lock me in um, oh, yes. anywhere in the world. So we're talking high-end, high-end, gorgeous glasses. And I'm going to be trying loads on later, hopefully, if this will let me. So I just thought we'd do a quick TBC, where, where TBC meets... Jez, Hi. from Eyes on St Albans. Hi, how are we doing? So, Jez, so, how's it all going? <laughs> it's going fine, and we've sort of sort of opened, like a soft launch, where I've opened the door for people to come in and see what we're all about. Um, but I've not sort of splashed it yet, because I've got so much to do. There's still some work to do in the shop with regard to putting up um, pictures within the light boxes. I've got loads of pricing to do, stock to do. So there's, there's a lot to do before I actually open in anger. And also, I'm waiting for all the optical equipment to arrive, which about a, we're about a week away from that. And my ophthalmic optician, she's not back from holiday till mid-July. So we're not sort of booking appointments at the moment. So. But meanwhile, people can come in and check out frames and if they've got their own prescription. Absolutely, if they've been tested within sort of 12, certainly within 12 months and 24 months, then bring in the prescription or I've got a machine which can measure the prescriptions. Come and have a look. So what makes you different, Jez? Me or yes. the shop? <laughs> I'm kind of going over here because you were a bit dark there. So yeah, what makes Eyes on St Albans different? Why are you so unique? Why should people get, get themselves down here and come well, and take what, a look? Well, what we've got here is we've got 35 years of experience in the sort of upper echelon of the eyewear market. Um, to tap into so I've picked design designer collections which are from all over the world everywhere from California through to Italy Japan and all the collections are unique in their own right and it's probably arguably the only place in the world that has all these individual designers under one roof mm -hmm. um, because what you'll find is you'll have some shops in central London that has this one design collection but not all of them together so I've picked on my experience over 35 years to put it all together under one roof. Brilliant. And you had quite an amazing story of how you started, Jez, didn't you? Because I did say, how did you get into eyewear and glasses? Well, interestingly enough, I was working in, you, you guys may remember if you're from St Albans, the jet garage at the bottom of Hollywell Hill, uh, opposite mm -hmm. what was the Duke of Marlborough. I was working in there as a petrol pump attendant at the age of 16. I wasn't going back to Verulam uh, for various reasons, which we won't go into. Um, and I was sort of complaining to a friend of mine in there that I've got nothing to do. It was about June or July, this time of year in fact, in 1983 I think it was. Um, and this lady came, comes in and um, she said, my boss is looking for somebody. So I went for an interview at a particular company in Camfield Road and it was a frame company, a spectacle frame company. And they offered me the job and I was... I was in a warehouse from the age of 16, and then shortly after that, I was the youngest spectacle frame rep. I was on the buses before I had a driving license, going right round Hartford, just selling specs to, in fact, all the opticians at that time. So Brilliant. that's how I started in the business. And was that high end, or did you just discover a love for glasses? I discovered a love and an aptitude for looking at the model numbers. It's a bit, a bit sad and a bit geeky, but the model numbers on frames, the colours and the sizes. And I used to go run around the warehouse and pick them out and deliver them and, and, and uh, pack them up and send them out. And I don't know, I just I, I fell in love with eyewear because at that time there were a few collections which were a little bit different. And this was at the days when we were pulling out from the National Health. So yes. if you look at this, this is... This I is, have a pair of National Health glasses that were my grandfather's. Well, this particular, um, this particular item them. is it's from... They've got a pink pair, the, you know, the blue pair. Everyone had, oh, there's yeah, the there pink they pair. Are at the oh, I couldn't see them, they're great. So this is from 1983, <gasps> and it's the very last National Health um, framed frames, if you like. Mm -hmm. And that's, that means a lot to me, because that was the very first year I entered optics, that's which fantastic. is now, what's that, 35 years ago. Wow. Um, so and since... Do you wear different glasses every day? 
every every hour change. Brilliant. I love it. We're just absolutely sport for choice here. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's the whole idea. It's is to do something different within the industry, which number one, nobody's doing. Give people an experience because the experiences people have mm. in opticians is always it's almost like going to a dentist, but not quite as so painful. Yeah, it's um, not really. A so choice. what we're doing here is offering something a little bit different and making it an environment that people want to come into. So whether mm. that's a nice cup of coffee, whether that's a glass of prosecco after the test. Yum. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also, if you are, how, how many houses is this going to? This will be going to this will be going to uh, nine and a half thousand houses around um, Marshallswick within the next two to three weeks. So look out for it, and it's, you can clean your glasses or your mobile phone or. It, it's a big microfiber cloth um, branding. The whole idea of the business is to actually. Uh, build a brand, not just open an optician. So mm -hmm. we have the squeaky clean. Mm -hmm. We have yes. the, we have the bottle of solution. The bottle. You, if you come in and get a bottle, you can refill it at any time for free. Absolutely. And <gasps> and a gorgeous candle. A little gorgeous candle again it's within the same branding. It. It's got gold and in inside. It. Real gold. Real gold. Oh, real gold, sir. Absolutely. Real gold, and that real was gold. designed by Jess himself, and it's got a lovely pong. I must there say. You go. And lavender and amber. Lavender and amber. Lovely. Excuse me. Go for it. And over here's the coffee. It's a lovely coffee. I've tasted it already. And prosecco. And also over this corner will be the where you can top up your your bottle to clean things. So anyway, there you go. There's a little whirlwind tour. I suggest you come down. I'm sure Jez is going to do a launch or some sort of thing where Absolutely. we get TBC guys and other guys down and come and try stuff on and have a chat with Jez himself. But Please. Also, I will put this out, but it won't be datable on the TBC TV channel. I probably didn't say that right, but you'll meet Jez at the Wahoos on Wednesday. Oh, okay. I believe I'm presenting. He I is. Believe. He's going to present at Wahoo. Anyway, thanks, Jez, and Thank we'll you see too. you soon. See you Bye. soon, guys. Bye. Bye.